Tesla topping the tape today, the electric automaker surging nearly 4 percent on a report that China will require all ride-sharing vehicles to be electric. This coming as Tesla's Gigafactory in China reportedly nears completion, while demand for Model X and Model 3 cars in the country ramps up thanks to a 10 percent tax credit from the Chinese government for EV ownership. Meanwhile, Tesla's gearing up to report earnings next Wednesday. The company missed delivery targets for the third quarter. So how should investors be preparing for this tape? Are you still short, Tim? Still short. Uh, I think the, the cash flow issue is really what it what matters most. Remember, Model 3 is supposed to be uh, the every man and woman's car. It's supposed to be affordable. It's supposed to be $35,000. Uh, and it seems to me that that's not something they can do. They've never been able to produce this car comfortably uh, and profitably. And then the S and some of the cash cows, I think have, we've seen demand year over year come down dramatically. Uh, I don't think right now that Tesla is the savior for China. Uh, and at a time when I think China is looking to uh, establish their own players in tech land, I don't, I don't think they're going to be giving away the farm to Tesla. And in fact, I would argue at a time when we're having a major standoff with China on technology and you know, the 21st century, I, I don't think they're going to be backing Tesla in a way that means you know, demand I, in China. I would agree. I mean, I, I agree with you. I mean, I agree that China probably has its, its own interests and in, in perpetuating and helping uh, its homegrown industry. But at the same time, Tesla is one of the few companies let into the country without a joint venture, right? I mean, it has a gigafactory in Shanghai, and it didn't have to partner with anybody for yeah. it. Well, it's, be, it's so yeah. that's pretty extraordinary in it, terms of just the signaling to the world of letting Tesla in. And, and China's done a good job of letting people in who they've wanted to, you know, basically help build an industry and then show them to the door or at least make it be under China's terms. I'm, I'm sure and, that's and what's plus going you on. have the another interesting angle is you have the tax credits going away here and they're showing up in China at the end of the year. They're done. Uh, in the United States, but you also have a 25% short interest, and Tesla is above its 50, its 100, and its 200-day moving average right now. So I think it's about good news and positioning in this one as well. The question is how much of what might be coming that's better is already priced in. We had that June 3rd low at 176. It's trading at 250 or 45% off the low. At this point, I think you fade it. I agree with Carter. I mean, I, listen, and Steve makes a great point. I think that's what Tesla has going for it is 36 million shares or so of short interest, and people are covering. October 3rd, this stock looked like it's going to go down below $200 when they reported those delivery numbers. The stock was down 6%. It got a lifeline over the last couple of days. That's great. But into October 23rd, if this stock continues to levitate, I think you get out, and if you're aggressive like Tim, I think you can play from the short side, absolutely. Would you play from the short side? I mean, you said you'd I mean, if you had to be directional, I'd rather be short than long. Wow. What will cause you to reevaluate your short at this point. They, they need to show that they have a sustainable business without capital markets being wide open for them and not caring about profitability, this is a deliveries, short, corporate governance. Yeah, yeah I, this look, this is a structural short. This is a company that I, I, I think um, has significant issues in terms of their ability to do what they said they're doing. It's not about the technology. It's a beautiful car, by the way. Um, and, you know, Elon Musk is somebody that's done a lot of great things for this country. But I, I, I still have major issues with the governance and the disclosure and, and the level of transparency around this company. Yeah. There was a great vanity. F you know, I, I'm, I'm predisposed to read the Vanity Fair. I know. I like yes. the long-form it's, it's articles. Obvious. It's obvious. Well, I take that as a compliment. Yeah, it is. And I know it's not meant to be, but I'll take it that way. I like the map. There was a very interesting piece about, you know, Mr. Musk and what's going on. And if you read that, you're saying to yourself, not only is this a $200 stock, it's probably a close to a $100 stock. Mm. But I digress. I think Tim's right. I think in October 23rd, you take profits, and if you're aggressive, you short the name. This is a stock where both the shorts and the longs can be right, right? It depends on the month. The stock is up 20% in two months. So it takes the heart of a lot of people, and then it could drop another 20%. So there's enough room for everyone to be right, and, and I get the point of selling it, but the problem is a stock like this gains momentum. It looks like it's building a quasi base right around these levels. So I'll take the other side of Carter because it's a trading show. Forced to pick, I'd rather be a buyer than a seller now. That's a would you rather. It. Oh. It's a trader to fade it. I can't. The game well. starts to creep up on me. I mean, they're, That's they're, a would you rather. They can be very confusing. For I, people, I, I still think just, you know, if there's a closing point here, or maybe this yeah. won't be the closing point. I don't think the stock price reflects anything. I don't think the stock price reflects right. fundamentals. I don't think it reflects the balance sheet. I don't think it reflects true demand. Um, I think the stock, uh, if they were to uh, find themselves in, I, I think we've actually already started to see restructuring. But this stock could have major, major issues, and then suddenly you wake up one day and you see that on the tape, and it's, you know, a $200 stock. Uh, I think that's the way this thing trades.